The Big Bend Tunnel was the longest tunnel in America, a mile and a quarter through the heart of West Virginia mountains. The C&O Railroad started building it back around 1870. There were plenty of hard work for everyone, but the steel driving men worked the hardest, and the hardest working steel driving man of them all was John Henry. Now John Henry was a powerful man, six feet tall and 200 pounds of rippling muscle. He swung his nine pound hammer from sun up to sundown driving a steel drill into solid rock. Little Bill, the shaker, turned John Henry's drill between hammer blows and pulled it out when the hole was done. When there were enough holes, the demolition boys filled them with nitroglycerin and blew that rock to kingdom come. Then John Henry drove more steel, day after day in the heat and darkness and stale air, sterile air of the tunnel. John Henry always sang while he drove the steel. And at the end of Every line he brought that nine pound hammer down like a crash of thunder. This old hammer rings like silver, shines like gold, boys, shines like gold. Ain't no hammer in these mountains, rings like mine, boys, rings like mine. One day, Captain Tommy interrupted John Henry in the middle of his song. John Henry, the company wants to test one of those t new steam drills. They say a steam drill can do work of three or four men. But I say a good man can beat the steam. And I say, you're the best man I have. Captain Tommy, a man ain't nothing but a man. Before I let that steam drill beat me down, I'll die with my hammer in my hand. If you beat that steam drill, I'll give you one hundred dollars and a new suit for clothes. That's mighty generous, but you don't worry about that. Just go into town and buy me a twenty pound hammer. This nine pound mall is feeling pretty light. The news of the contest spread through the camp like a strong wind whipping down the mountain. The company men said John Henry was a poor working fool who didn't stand a chance against that mighty steam drill. Some of the working men thought the same, but the steel driving men knew John Henry, and they believed in the power of a mighty man. That night, John Henry told his wife, Polly Ann, about the contest. Don't strain yourself, honey, because we could use that $100, and you need a new suit. And you need to I don't worry about money or clothes. Don't you see, sugar? A man ain't nothing but a man, and a man gotta beat that steam. The next morning, the steel drivers crowded into a Big Bend tunnel. It was hot and dusty, and the air was so foul that a man could hardly breathe. The only light was the flickering of lamps burning lard oil and blackstrap molasses. The company men wheeled the steam drill into the tunnel and set it up against the rock. It was nothing but a machine, all shiny and modern and strange. Then John Henry walked in and stood beside it. There was nothing but a man, all black and fine and natural. Captain Tommy handed John Henry a brand new 20 pound hammer. There ain't nothing like it in West Virginia, he said. Good luck, son. John Henry held the hammer in his hand and felt its natural weight. It's in the flickering light of the tunnel, the head of that hammer shone like gold. Gonna call this hammer Polly Ann, he said. Little Bill sat on the rock, holding the six foot drill in his hand. John Henry towered above the steel, just waiting to begin. It was so quiet in that tunnel, you could hear the soft breathing of the steel jarring men. Captain Tommy blew his whistle. The company man turned on the steam drill. John Henry swung his 20 pound hammer back and brought it down like a crash of like thunder. As he swung it back, he again he began to sing. This old hammer rings like silver. Shines like gold, boys. Shines like gold. John Henry kept driving steel and the steam drill kept drilling. Pretty soon the whole mountain was rumbling and shaking. John Henry's muscles bulged and strained like they had never bulged and strained before. Sweat cascaded down his powerful chest and veins protruded from the sides of his handsome face. Are you alright, John Henry? Don't worry about me. A man ain't nothing but a man, and a man gotta beat that steam. When they hit at the end of the six foot drill, Little Bill pulled it out and shoved in a longer drill, and then a longer one and a longer one still. John Henry swung his 20 pound hammer and drove that steel. He swung and drove faster and harder and faster and harder until that Pollyann hammer caught fire. The whole Big Ben tunnel glowed with the blue flame of John Henry's hammer. Time, shouted Captain Tommy. 
Time, cried the company men, shutting off the steam drill. Time, gasped John Henry, leaning on his hammer. I need a drink of water. While John Henry drank his water, Captain Tommy and the company men measured the holes. The steam drill had done nine feet, and John Henry had done fourteen. John Henry, shouted the steam drivers. John Henry beat the steam. Congratulations, son. I don't care what you say. I'm gonna give you a hundred dollars and a new suit of John clothes. John Henry leaned heavily on his hammer and sucked in the stale air of the tunnel. That's mighty generous to you, Captain Tommy. But you give that one hundred dollars to Polly Ann, and you bury me in that suit of clothes. Then he slumped to the ground, clutching his hammer in his hand. I beat that steam, but I've died inside. As his eyes closed, John Henry lay back against the black earth and whispered, A man ain't nothing but a man.